The Clean Power Hour is brought to you by CPS America, the maker of North America's number one three-phase string inverter, with over six gigawatts shipped in the U.S. The CPS America product lineup includes three-phase string inverters ranging from 25 to 275 kW. Their flagship inverter, the CPS 250-275, is designed to work with solar plants ranging from 2 megawatts to 2 gigawatts. The 250-275 pairs well with CPS America's exceptional data communication, controls, and energy storage solutions. Go to chinpowersystems.com to find out more. Yeah, I think I think it's quite of a, a product. I know like our competitors are also um, following us, you know, getting similar product out. But um, which I believe that we have this unique structure, not only from the battery side, but CPS is also good at electronics. Sure. So we bring the whole system, including the battery and the PCS and the media voltage transformer together kind of as a turnkey and test it out, you know, with the best of our engineer. We have a world-class engineer um, globally, not only in China, but also in the U.S., but also, you know, Europe markets, Australia market. Are you speeding the energy transition? Here at the Clean Power Hour, our host Tim Montague and John Weaver bring you the best in solar, batteries, and clean technologies every week. Want to go deeper into decarbonization? We do too. We're here to help you understand and command the commercial, residential, and utility solar, wind, and storage industries. So let's get to it. Together we can speed the energy transition. Today on the Clean Power Hour, battery storage. My guest today is Dr. Zihan Yi. He is the Utility and ESS Product Solutions Director for CPS America, otherwise known as Chint Power Systems America. I want to welcome you to the show, Dr. Z. Yeah, thank you, Tim. I'm glad to be here. Really looking forward to this and bringing you to my audience. You know, as all solar professionals now know and recognize, solar is wonderful technology, but storage is even more important, right? Because uh, you can only generate electrons from sunlight during certain hours of the day and storage gives us the flexibility to then deliver those to absorb them and deliver them on demand at other times of the day and they truly are a multifaceted value stack for the grid and the grid needs lots of solar and lots of storage and so it's very heady days in that combination of things. And Chint is known as a inverter manufacturer, but you also make other products, including now a five megawatt hour. You heard that right. Five megawatt hour storage solution. So you've been building out your CNI storage solutions and now going after utility scale storage, which is just wonderful. And we are going to uh, do a deep dive into some of that. But first, Tell our listeners a little bit about your background, Dr. Z. How did you get interested in electrical engineering and solar and storage? Uh, yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, so I, I got a lot of renewables uh, since college when I was um, doing a major of electrical engineering. And um, at that time, it was more about traditional power generations. And uh, most renewables are more about wind power, uh, EV solar and uh, energy storage were still new at that time and but my focus in the like the the last two years in college was on electronics uh from where i you know started to understand the igbts and mosfet inverters converters and after college i i went uh, to pursue my uh, phd and that one was more focused on renewable especially like controls and protections for pv and energy storage um, so i did a couple of the r d projects um, on that and uh, which later became the start of my career. Very cool. Yeah, that's Yeah, that's how I basically how I get into this uh, era. And you are the author of more than 30 peer reviewed uh, journal articles and conference proceedings, um, holder of six patents. So you have a, a very long track record in the R&D space research and development. So, so yeah, I would love to hear a little more about that work. You were you were with an organization called the Global Energy Interconnection Research mm -hmm. Institute, um, Geary, otherwise known as, yep, as, yep. as Geary North America. 
and yep, which yep. is not which is not an organization that many of my listeners w- would be familiar with, except more on mm-hmm. the utility side. But uh, yeah, tell us a little more about your background and your research interests. So actually, this start with my PhD, right? So in order to get graduated, you you got to publish paper. Otherwise, my advisor won't let me go. <laughs> so I um, like the most most of the time at school was like, you know, except for doing TAs or tutors for the undergrad courses. Um, we have to do a lot, a lot of research. Actually, a lot of them were sponsored by like companies, uh, renewable companies. So yeah, we, we started to publish a lot of paper uh, out of it, you know, from the research. And and uh, after graduation, I joined this uh, company called Global Energy Interconnection Research Institute of North America. So it's a uh, a research lab more focused on the like the great uh, reliability and uh, um, st- smart grid technologies uh, R and D. So my research uh, f- actually from my PhD started to the, my first job was focused a lot more. On the smart grid side, and uh, which includes a lot of renewables, uh, like from the grid perspective, like how you deal with the renewables, what's the impact of that, and how you, you know, introduce renewables to the power system uh, to improve the reliability of the system, rather than bring in the negative impact. So, yeah, I've done a lot of research of that, and especially um, the company was in um, the Silicon Valley where. You know, AI and IoT have been a big thing here. So we have a lot of research on, you know, how to utilize AI and um, and IoT uh, technology to improve the re- renewable energy performance and uh, um, the great operation with, uh, you know, the uncertainties brought by these uh, resources. Yeah, uh, you know, example, the, the the grid is a is a about a hundred year old technology, yeah, yeah. right? We've had yeah. an electric grid here in North America for just over 100 years. And yeah. for most of that time, it's been very, very similar, right? You've got power, exactly. you've got power plants like coal, yeah, yeah. gas, and now solar, wind, and battery yeah. storage power plants. And then wires connecting that you know, source of power to the consumers of electricity, right? Our built environment, yeah. homes, buildings, etc., and yeah, it's yeah. it's at, at face value it's not that complicated but mm-hmm. now right we're a, a, a few things are happening we're consuming a lot more electricity so the demands on the grid are getting uh bigger and bigger yeah, and yeah. and we're greening the grid right we're replacing those traditional sources of coal gas and and other traditional sources with wind solar and batteries which wind and solar mm-hmm. being very intermittent and so the yeah, grid yeah. is becoming much more dynamic. Exactly. Meanwhile, we have all these smart things like inverters. Uh, inverters are computers that are also converting electricity, you know, from the DC yeah. of the solar to the AC for the grid. Um, yeah. And and so there's kind of a revolution happening in grid technology, mm-hmm. right? We have a lot mm-hmm. better technology today than we did 100 years ago. and yeah. And this is a good thing, right? Because we need to... Uh, triple the grid to electrify everything, including transportation and heavy industry and HVAC, et cetera, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and we're integrating all these smart devices and renewables into the grid. So it's it's a very exciting time. Yeah. I, w- I wonder if you have any kind of a a simple way to communicate that to, to lay people who are not grid experts, though. How do you define the smart grid? You know what? That's that's a great question. So, that the grid is becoming smarter, like in multiple ways, right? Not only from the generation side, but it's like kind of a a red like a revolution from uh, generation to transmission to distribution and even to the loads. So, generation, you like for example, we have this smart inverters um, for wind or for solar, uh, and also batteries. Like we're adding a lot of batteries on the Kind of generation side and also transmission side, but in the distribution network we also have a lot of like residential uh, solar, residential uh, ESS and uh, EV charging stations, and also like for example um, a lot of loads like nowadays at home like they are also smart like appliances like you can just control it. Like for example your um, 
your HVAC system, right? Like before yep. it was like scheduled, but now you can really control it. So these are all resources for the grid operator. Like a power system, uh, the best for power system is always balance. So you always have to balance the load and the generation. And balancing those is not only from the generation side, but a lot of time you can also do it from the low side. For example, demand response using a lot of these aggregated resources, including you know residential battery, residential ESS, uh, and also those loads. So I think a smart grid is like it's forming the 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 system from multiple layers. But it's in general uh, why it's getting smart is because of the communication and the controllability. Indeed. Yeah. Communication and controllability. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about your role at CPS. That is really the thrust of this interview. How long have you been with CPS and, and what was it that got you excited about that opportunity? And, um, and tell us what you do there. Yeah. So I, I joined CPS uh, in 2022 as a utility and uh, ESS product director. Um, so I, I work closely with our r &E team, of course, on a new product road mapping, um, product strategy, product development, and uh, improvement. And uh, at the front end, um, my team also work very closely with the application engineering um, to support the sales team, like from um, mostly technical side to make sure that our, like our solution is providing the best for the customer and uh, we're providing the, um, the the best technical support for our customer projects. So it, it's a combination of product and um, also like front end support for customer and projects for my, my, my day to day. Got it. And tell us a little bit about the evolution of the, of this. Um, well, I guess of the family of storage products that, that CPS has been rolling out here in North America, which, you know, has really uh, crescendoed, for lack of a better exp expression, with the release of the five megawatt hour uh, container solution. But walk us through just a little bit of, of how CPS is interacting with the energy transition, how customer pull through and demands is, you know, leading your product evolution yeah so uh energy storage actually uh i know that cps was most probably well known for like string inverters for pv uh but like globally we also have a lot of like energy storage deployment uh like the cps global we probably have already deployed more than two gigawatt hour of batteries um but for the us the utility battery were like new to our team, uh, but we've done quite a few of like CNI storage before. Um, in the US, probably 20, 20 projects of the CNI systems, uh, the legacy products. And um, we like growing our team um, to that, you know, ESS uh, era as well, um, as we, you know, develop our new products. So this year, we actually from last year, we start to um have this five megawatt hour battery um which we would like to bring to the market to the um, utility market especially uh and which we believe would disrupt the market because that was the first one actually um uh, in a 20 feet container with five megawatt hour pretty high energy density and uh, especially using our string structure which you know cps being very good at and uh, well known for it uh, we brought the string structure to the ESS as well. And um, we have been, you know, researching a lot in the markets. And we believe this technology will also, you know, disrupt the ESS uh, market as well. Yeah, so, you can think of, you can think of uh, CNI storage being at the 100, uh, 100 kWh yeah. uh, scale, and then multi 100 kWh, and then megawatt yeah. scale right and a five megawatt hour correct me if i'm wrong but a five megawatt hour battery is just 50 100 kilowatt hour batteries put together mm -hmm. into a container basically right you're you're taking that building block and scaling it up i'm sure there's it's more complicated than that but 
But why five, why five megawatt hours? Is that just a, yeah. the amount of batteries that you can get in a convenient container or something like that? Well, that that really depends on the the size of the uh, the battery cells. Um, it's like the PV module, the wafer. Uh, it's getting bigger. Like before, we had a one hundred sixty six millimeter, then one hundred eighty two, and nowadays people are using two hundred ten. Sure. Uh, it's the same like. If, like the same evolution for battery, like from you know two hundred eighty mph hour the LLP battery cells, and nowadays we have this like commercialized three hundred fourteen mph hour. So when we were designing the system, we kind of want to balance, uh, like the maximum. Of course, we always want to maximize the the power density or energy density, but you also gotta consider like the safety margin um, and the reliability of the product. Um, so you not, not only want to insert as much as possible, but you want to make a reasonable product that holds as much as, you know, power as well as balancing its performance and energy density. So we think the five mega hour would be a good balance for this. And um, CPS also, also was, you know, the first one to make a five mega hour container uh, with RFP batteries. Um, and uh, we got a UL uh, from last September. And um, yeah, I think I think it's quite of a, a product. I know like our competitors are also um, following us, you know, getting similar product out. But um, which I believe that we have this unique structure not only from the battery side, but CPS is also good at power electronics. Sure. So we bring the whole system, including the battery and the PCS and the media voltage transformer together, kind of as a turnkey, and test it out. You know, with the best of our engineer, we have a world class engineer um, globally, not only in China, but also in the US, but also, you know, Europe markets, Australia market. So, yeah, I think it's it's a pretty nice building block as a five megawatt hour as well, right? So, uh, for a lot of like five, five megawatt, 10 megawatt project, you can use it. And even up to, you know, 100 megawatt larger project, you, you can also use it. So, I think this five megawatt hour is. It's kind of a balance of a lot of stuff, like yeah. including from design perspective, from application perspective. You you mentioned that you know CPS has already deployed gigawatt hours of of storage internationally, yeah. and that's yeah. what sometimes we Americans forget is that there's a whole global market for energy storage and solar too, right? And yeah. we're just a small fraction, actually. We're about ten percent, I think, of the global. PV market, for example, and uh, China might be 70% of the global PV market. China is a huge, you know, humongous um, consumer of PV, not just manufacturer. And the same for storage, of course. So we're in some ways playing catch up here in North America to what's going on internationally. And there, there are reasons for that, right? We are very technology forward here in the U.S., but we also have a very entrenched uh, traditional grid technology industry, right? The, the fossil industry is a, is a major force here um, and a major economic driver. So um, this five, watt, five megawatt hour building block, though, what if you're a, a solar storage or storage alone developer, what else should you know about this solution? And I guess I'm, I'm just curious, like what kind of questions do you and your team get that, that you can share with our audience to help our audience understand the value that this is bringing to the energy transition? Yeah, so actually the, the most question that I got from um, customer is, um, can I use it in uh, like, small project or it has to be in big projects so uh, actually this like five megawatt like i mentioned earlier is like a, a balance of a lot of different aspects like from product to application um, so i think the first is we have this five megawatt hour together to pair with our 2.4 uh, megawatt pcs um, as a two hour system for standard but we can also you know all parallel different or multiple batteries with that PCS to make it a longer duration, for example, four hours, eight hours. 
mm-hmm. and we and we have UL certified, uh, you know, for all of these different uh, applications. And I think one thing I I would like to mention is the um like the string the string structure that we've been using for the um the ESS um which I think is unique and especially for CPS it's it's a dream in CPS like we have been focused solely on string um right we were yeah we were uh, the number one market share uh, leader for three phase string in the US uh, for the last seven or eight years. So, I mean, to to get the first place um, for one year may be easy, but to get the first place in the like consecutive years, like multiple years, is actually requiring a lot of work and a lot of you know charge from customer as well. So, we we brought this you know string structure also to our ESS. Um, we have this two point four megawatt system, which actually uh, is an integration of a twelve. 200 kW PCS uh, on the skid is a highly integrated product. So you can use this 2.4 megawatt PCS with our 5 megawatt system from my 5 megawatt hour battery. So you can have, you know, individual context- connections from each of the 200 megawatt PC- 200 kilowatt PCS to the rack of the battery directly. So the 5 megawatt hour battery is actually operating as a combination of 12 racks independently. So you can kind of control the rack mm. independently. And that means you're reducing the mismatch loss and you have a lot of more like controllability over the 12 racks. And you can even, you know, do the uh, rack uh, level augmentation in a third, like third five year. For example, like the traditional way when you are augmenting a battery, you, you will have to add an entire container but with our strategy and our structure, you can also just uh, add strings. Like for example, at the beginning, you can reserve some space in the battery container and on the PCS skit. And uh, in the fifth year, you can just add one more string with one more PCS, like 200 kW, to improve the to keep the um, the power density and the, the energy density of the entire system. So a lot of benefits out of it, and also including the O&M. I know O&M is a big thing, especially for battery, because you want want battery to be available, the availability, the uptime. Um, so with the string structure, you kind of share the same benefit from the PV string battery. You can, uh, when, you know, for example, if a PCS module is down, you are talking about only 200 kW instead of the entire 2.4 megawatt. And you can just, take the bad one out and then just, you know, replace it with a, uh, swap it with uh, a new one. So the o and would be pretty straightforward. Uh, the entire PCS module is swappable. You don't have to wait for like um, CPS technician to show up. Uh, usually the o and team, they can just do it by themselves, which is pretty straightforward and easy. The Clean Power Hour is brought to you by CPS America, the maker of North America's number one three-phase string inverter with over six gigawatts shipped in the U.S., the CPS America product lineup includes three-phase string inverters ranging from 25 to 275 kW. Their flagship inverter, the CPS 250-275, is designed to work with solar plants ranging from 2 megawatts to 2 gigawatts. The 250-275 pairs well with CPS America's exceptional data communication, controls, and energy storage solutions. Go to chinpowersystems.com to find out more. Tell us about the state of the art. I mean, I love this <clears throat> flexibility and scalability aspects of the product. Yeah. What is the state of the art for the expected lifetime of of lithium ion batteries? You're using a LFP uh, mm-hmm. chemistry, and um, I'm interested yeah. in lifetime and also supply chain. Like, if if a customer were to call today and say, "Okay," I want to order, you know, a 10 megawatt hour um, battery. What what is the what is the life cycle of of getting a product delivered like that? Do you mean the lead time or the? Yeah, the lead time. Yeah, how long <laughs> does it take to actually get your yeah, yeah. get your grubbies on these things? Our lead time for our battery is usually around six seven months for the five megawatt hour, including the the battery and the PCS. So wow. pretty quick. Yep. As as what we have been doing in the in the solar as well, like four four to six weeks for our PV inverter, so we're adding fast. 
Got it. Yeah. And, and the expected lifetime, what, what is that for a, for state-of-the-art ESS? Yep. So, so usually RFP, it, it have a degradation over years, like depending on how much you're charging, like how the, the, the charging cycle, for example, uh, you're charging like 360 cycles per year, or you're charging 720 cycles per year, the lifetime will be different. Sure. But typically, for example, for like um, a battery usually is designed for at least 20 years. And that's what we've been seeing from the, um, the customer side. They re usually require a 20 year or 25 year battery. Uh, so over the year, the battery will have degradation. Like we will provide a degradation curve based on a battery and a, a augmentation plan. Uh, if the customer would like to keep, for example, 80% of the SOC, 80% uh, of the uh, energy um, in the number, like 20 year, we'll have a plan of, for mm -hmm. example, at a 10 year or at a 15 year, you will have to add how much of the battery into in order to get to that point. Yeah. But usually yeah. what we've been seeing is like 20, 25 years, typically. And in the and in this use case, you know, I mean, this is a utility scale battery. Yeah. Um, yeah. Often being paired with a utility scale storage, right? So you're, mm -hmm. you could charge the battery during the day from, from sunlight and then yeah. discharge the battery when energy is a premium uh, you know, in the evening, for example, yep, yep, yep. Uh, to maximize the value of the battery. Mm -hmm. But w what what are you seeing, uh, you know, in terms of what is the expected use case? Are the are and, and are we talking like ten thousand cycles? Uh, is that the life, or is it more than that now? That depends on how again how you use the battery. Like you're charging like full power, or like you just like charge between a small bandwidth of the SOC in that case. Mm -hmm. But but for application, I mean, battery had a lot of different application, right? Like uh, what you were mentioning, for example, the energy arbitrage or peak shaving or load shifting for PV. Uh, that's more a typical uh, market where you charge the battery only like maybe like a once a day for, for like one, one cycle a day uh, for most of the case. But... We also see um, some emerging markets, for example, to use a battery pair with EV charging station. You know, the, the goal of the EV charge and the, like, the goal of the EV uh, in the US is, is getting bigger, like the EV, um, you know, you see a lot of more and more EVs on the, on the street, but sure. But the EV charging station is, I would say, is not still not available, not, not that available as our, like, gasoline charging stations right so a lot of like that like ev charging stations are being built over the highways and like you mentioned also earlier the infrastructure for the transmission line the power system it were all so adding those ev charging stations has a lot of burden for the grid right and especially like the sometimes like the for example the transformer is not sufficient for the amount of power you want to add. So we've seen a lot of cases like customer asking for battery together with, to pair with EV charging stations. And those are like a little bit different than, you know, PV plus storage. Uh, Cause those application usually require the battery to discharge a large amount of uh, power within a short time. Uh, like for example, like one hour battery, uh, mostly same in that case. Yeah, but they want a pretty high power density um, within a short bandwidth. So those type of application would would use a different type of it's still RP, but different type of cell, which can you know give more power uh, within a short period of time. So I, I would say like different application would have expectations for life cycles and the you know the durations and the lifespan for the battery. Yeah. I mean, since you have you have a pretty unique purview into what developers are looking at doing and where, uh, can you say anything about what markets, what geographic markets in the U.S. are hotter than others? I know, you know, for example, there's as much storage now being permitted in Texas in ERCOT as there is solar, yeah. right? So yeah, ERCOT yeah. is a very hot market. Of course, there's California. Uh, which is, you know, on the bleeding edge of the energy transition. So a lot of storage happening in California. And then you have states where you have certain incentives, like New York has a, um, 
an incentive for storage. Illinois has an incentive. Are those truly the the short list of hot spots for storage? Or yeah, I'm just curious, what are you seeing? We we're actually seeing everywhere, but like the size are different. Like in, on the east coast, mostly the the project size are smaller, maybe due to the you know the land restrictions and. On the east coast, also the solar are like smaller, like a lot of five and ten megawatt projects, or up to twenty, thirty megawatts. But the southwest projects are usually, you know, maybe it de- depends on location. But most of the case is like we're seeing hundred megawatt, two hundred megawatt, and um, like bigger projects. So yeah, um, I would say I mean, in general, if we're talking about capacity, the southwest is heavier. Um, and that's also a very you know PV dense area uh, in the U.S. And a lot of PV are being overbuilt as the you know the module price is getting down. Uh, people tend to want to have like a higher DC to AC ratio on their system, and the best way to you know to match that is to add battery storage to save that clip energy, mm-hmm. so you can fully utilize it and maximize the the investment. Uh, in the PV system. Yeah, indeed. Uh, I, you know, I mean, I, I think this is a great concept. Overbuilt, yeah. uh, the now cheaper and cheaper PV, and add storage to store the extra power. Um, so what else should our listeners know, though, about CPS and your energy storage? Like, you know, you, you host a annual innovation day at your Dallas headquarters, which if yeah. you're listening to this, uh, reach out to your local CPS representative and get on that invitation list. Cause that is a really wonderful event. It's great networking with other EPCs and developers and asset owners, really fun event. And you get a behind the scenes on, you know, how CPS is, um, doing things as a company and, uh, you know, the latest and greatest tools and technology. So really wonderful event there. But what else should our listeners know about CPS? What is it that separates you from your competition? Yeah, I think, I think, uh, of course, product, like we have reliable product, that's the first. But I would also want to emphasize that um, our team is pretty localized. We have a great service team and engineering team. Uh, of course, also sales team in the U.S. Um, we have strong uh, teams that are ready to help our customer um, day-to-day in their projects. So you don't have to um, like wait for it because of time zone. A lot of suppliers are in different time zone area. We have people uh, across the country um, from the west to the east to ready to serve our customers. So just a call to us, we'll just, you know, get on and um, help the with the design. Um, and, and also our service team in the, serv- in the service center in Texas. Uh, we also have a lot of people over there um, ready to serve our customers. And I would say service is a big thing in, in, in PVs and also storage, because nobody can guarantee their product is like 100% running for 20 years. Um, so any product can go wrong, but can you get help if something is wrong, right? So we are always ready like to serve our project and customers. Like we have more than 20,000 projects probably in the US for PV. Um, and our team have been supporting every one of them. And we do have this uh, Flex OM system that is pretty, I would say convenient. Sometimes, for example, if something is wrong, um, customer give us access to remotely check the bat- uh, check the PV inverter or like the battery inverter. Uh, sometimes you, you would avoid like a truck roll um, just by simply resetting something in the system remotely. So yeah, I think those are like a lot of small things, but I think it's very important to separate us from the, you know our competitors. Yeah, it's not enough to have a great product, right? You have to have a great team supporting that product. Yeah. Um, from sales to operations and maintenance and yeah. service. Uh, and and that truly is a, um, a huge differentiator for CPS. The, the loyalty I, re- I saw among mm-hmm. 
um, EPCs at the Innovation Day was just off the charts. It really was. Um, it was it was very unique. So, well, what uh, what else should we know? Uh, you know, I don't know what I don't know, Doctor Z, and um, I'm you know I'm very excited that CPS is rolling out such wonderful utility scale products now, both inverters and storage. But what else would you like our EPC and developer listeners to know? Yeah, so so I guess uh, CPS um, we we are also like a solution provider, not only just like a PV inverter manufacturer. Nowadays, like we provide not only the inverter itself, but we also provide a solution like a total solution, including balance of system and uh, medium voltage transformer. Um, I know the lead time for transformer had been. Um, traveling a lot of uh, projects like in the last couple of years, but what we can say is our, our lead time is like 24 to 28 weeks, uh, which I would say is pretty good in considering the market. And um, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Also it's uh, our, our team is like for utility projects. We always start early with uh, our customer, like to help their engineering team uh, collaborating together to, you know, on the drawings and, uh, to design the system to make sure that our inverter is um, is used used in the right way um, and best supporting the project. So, yeah, I think I think those are pretty much what I I would you know let to say to the listeners is um, uh, if you have anything at all, just feel free to reach out to us anytime. We're always ready here, and our products are ready too. Um, we have this three hundred fifty kW. PV inverter uh, in stock um, in the U.S. Uh, lead time is four to six weeks, uh, including balance of systems. Yeah, you know, there's probably over 50 companies that sell energy storage solutions globally, but mm -hmm. there's only a small handful that uh, make the solution that you're referring to, right? This full wrap of products that play together, um, your, your own transformer, your own BOS, uh, your own inverters, and and of course your your ESS. So that is also, I think, a, a game changer for EPCs and and developers who are looking for a very easy to procure and reliable and cost effective product. Uh, well, with that, Doctor Z, I want to thank you and encourage all our listeners to please check out all of our content at cleanpowerhour.com. Give us a rating and a review on Apple and Spotify. Tell a friend about the show. Uh, that is the best thing you can do to help the clean energy transition is tell your friends. And reach out to me on LinkedIn. I love hearing from my listeners. You can connect with me also at cleanpowerhour.com where all of our content lives. Dr. Z, how can our listeners find you? Uh, it always, I mean, find us uh, on our website. Um, we have all the, you know, the most updated product material up there as well. Um, and um, uh, find me on LinkedIn if you would like to, you know, get more information uh, specifically. Yeah, we'll put a link to your LinkedIn profile in the show notes. And yep. uh, I will look forward to seeing you in uh, Anaheim at RE Plus this August. All mm -hmm. right. Well, with that, let's grow solar and storage. I'm Tim Montague. Have a great day. Hey listeners, this is Tim. I want to give a shout out to all of you. I do this for you twice a week. Thank you for being here. Thank you for giving us your time. I really appreciate you and what you're all about. Uh, you are part and parcel of the energy transition, whether you're an energy professional today or an aspiring energy professional. So thank you. I want to let you know that the Clean Power Hour has launched a listener survey and it would mean so much to me if you would go to cleanpowerhour.com, click on the About Us link right there on the main navigation that takes you to the About page and you'll see a big graphic, Listener Survey. Just click on that graphic and it takes just a couple of minutes if you fill out the survey, I will send you a lovely 
baseball cap with our logo on it. The other thing I want our listeners to know is that this podcast is made possible by corporate sponsors. We have Chin Power Systems, the leading three-phase string inverter manufacturer in North America. So check out CPS America. But we are very actively looking for additional support to make this show work. And you see here our media kit with all the sponsor benefits and statistics about the show. You know, we're dropping two episodes a week. We have now over 320,000 downloads on YouTube, and we're getting about 45,000 downloads per month. So this is a great way to bring your brand to our listeners, and our listeners are decision makers in clean energy. This includes project executives, engineers, finance, project management, and many other professionals who are making decisions about and developing, designing, installing, and making possible clean energy projects. So check out cleanpowerhour.com, both our listener survey on the About Us and our media kit, and become a sponsor today. Thank you so much. Let's grow solar and storage. The Clean Power Hour is brought to you by CPS America the maker of North America's number one three-phase string inverter, with over six gigawatts shipped in the U.S. The CPS America product lineup includes three-phase string inverters ranging from 25 to 275 kW. Their flagship inverter, the CPS 250-275, is designed to work with solar plants ranging from 2 megawatts to 2 gigawatts. The 250-275 pairs well with CPS America's exceptional data communication, controls, and energy storage solutions. Go to chinpowersystems.com to find out more.